Welcome back to another episode of SMB3 Warpless Seminar. Today we will be covering episode 4, which will be World 1, level 5. We have a lot to cover, so let's jump right in. 1-5 is one of the few levels where when you start, you hold down and B. This will start the sliding. And what you'll want to do is take damage from either the first or second beetle. Honestly, it doesn't really matter. As soon as you take damage and lose your tail, you will then start to hold forward and B to build your P-Speed. Once you have built your P-Speed, you will then have to do a medium jump that's most comfortable and consistent for you. And the only reason I'm saying that is because when you jump to a hill, sometimes Mario does this. What you saw is caused by bad positioning and sometimes a bad subpixel value, which will result in you coming to a dead stop. Try to mess around with the angles of jumps to see what works best for you. Every jump can be different. I like to jump right at the waterline and the hill because it seems to work best for me. Give it a try and when it starts working, next thing you will be doing is another medium jump to get you on the straight path under the pipe. From here, you will want to do a small side jump into the beetle and over the little gap to the next straight path. The side jump is the same one used in World 1 Level 1 on the Paracuba leading into the cloud. This next part is a little bit more tricky. First off, you will want to avoid jumping directly into the seam of the hill and the wall. You will almost always lose speed and execute a slow jump. It will look like this. We don't want that to happen because you lose P-Speed. We're looking to keep the sexiness. Luckily, there is a nice visual cue for this jump. The second last dark blue triangle on the hill will be the perfect time to jump. You gotta be quick though, because you'll be doing a full big jump as soon as you hit that visual cue. Two things can come after this. Your next jump will be frame perfect full big jump that looks like this, which will allow you to keep your P-Speed. If you don't frame perfect jump, it'll look like this. Regardless of which jump you do, you'll want to do a full big jump as soon as possible once you come out of that tunnel. If you manage to do the frame perfect jump, then what you'll want to do next is a full big jump as soon as Mario runs into the first cloud, and this will land you on the straight path after the second hill, but before the pit in the ground. You will want to execute another big jump right near the edge of that pit. And now that you're on top of the last hill, I need to pause right there and show you what you need to do if you don't frame perfect jump. Once you jump up, you will build your P-Speed quickly just by running forward a little. At first, it might juke you out because you'll be running normal and then boom, you'll have full speed. Once you build your speed, do your full big jump as you get close to the second cloud and the first green turtle, looking like this. If done correctly, you'll land on the turtle at the second hill. When you land on that turtle, make sure you press nothing. Don't hold A. Just forward and B right over the pit. This next jump is probably the hardest. You'll need to do a full big jump, but do a quick turn back turnaround like we did over the piranha plant in World 1 Level 1. It will look like this. We are now at where both single frame and non-single frame jump leads us. But again, there are two ways to do this next part, so I will start by showing the standard way first, then the harder way. From here, you will want to do a normal small jump down into the hole. You won't want to hit your face on the wall or else you will lose all your speed. So you'll want to do a turn back and land on the hill. Continue forward and jump over the piranha plant. Watch out for the ceiling though, because sometimes you will clip into it and stop. It will look like this. If you make it over the plant okay, just run forward and jump up the last hill. You don't want to run up the hill because you'll slow down. Then jump up into the pipe. Then the harder way. Since we're at the top of the hill, you'll want to crouch small jump, and just as you enter in the hole, try and do the quickest turn back that you can. It should line you right up to avoid the plant and continue to the end of the level pipe. Remember, there is no visual cue for the swag tunnel or the normal tunnel because both jumps down into the hole are done as soon as you land on the top of the hill. Since you won't land on the same spot on the hill every time, you'll have to learn how to feel out the super swaggy tunnel jump. It's time to tell you how to keep P-Speed out of a pipe. If you enter the end of the level pipe like I did, by jumping up into it and holding up, you will keep your P-Speed for the last section of the level until you hit the cart. So the trick is to slightly run forward for a couple frames, not many, after you exit the pipe and then do a full big jump. You should be able to keep your P-Speed every single time. 
This is our third level, and depending on what cards you already have in the bottom right corner, you might want to slow down and knock at three of the same cards to avoid a cutscene. You can do this by doing a turn back before you jump into the card. It should ensure you getting a mushroom or flower instead of the traditional full speed star. Here's what the level looks like done perfectly. and also what it looks like done normally. Thanks for watching episode 4, I hope you guys learned a lot. If you like what you saw, make sure to give me a thumbs up and tap that subscribe button to know when episode 5 comes out. I will be covering World 1 level 6. Also, if you would like to see some live action world record attempts, make sure to check out my live stream over on twitch.tv. The link will be in the description below. Thanks guys. See ya!